Chaining up for winter. Let's face it, having to install chains on your tires in the wet winter weather is not fun for anyone. While it might seem tempting to rush through the process to get out of the cold faster, you might actually be setting yourself up for more misery. Improperly installed chains can break and cause damage to your tires or your vehicle. Having a chain break or a tire blow out at the wrong moment could leave you stuck on a snowy roadside or in the worst case, cause a serious accident. We're going to have Nate show you how to properly install your chains so that you can avoid unnecessary delays and most importantly, return home safely. You don't want to be caught unprepared in the middle of your run. Before you leave the terminal, you'll want to check that you have chains. There should be a minimum of three sets, six chains on your vehicle. Cam wrench. Make sure there is a cam wrench either with the chains or stored somewhere in the cab for easy access. Bungee straps. Minimum of four per chain or 24. Zip ties. Regular zip ties for securing chains and red zip ties to mark any chains that are broken or excessively worn. You may also want to bring along reflective rain gear and boots to keep you dry while you're out in the rain or snow. Lastly, make sure you know what the chaining laws and requirements are along your route. There may be different requirements in several areas along your path. My name is Nate Thomas. I work for PWAG Traction Chain Inc. I'm here to show Matheson how to install tire chains properly and to prolong the life of the product. So the most crucial point of starting the chain installation is to make sure that you've properly laid your chains out. So I'm gonna to start to lay this chain out centered on the tire that I'm working on. And ideally to do as much work as you can possibly facing the oncoming traffic. A couple of key things I'm trying to do here is to make sure that I'm working with all of my hooks facing upward so that when I'm ready to do the installation, those are facing away from the tire. I also wanna make sure that I'm working with the cams facing away from the tire. Make sure I've thoroughly gone through each cross chain do an inspection on any type of cracks on the cross chain or on the side chain. I also want to make sure that all of the cams are in their open or most extended position. The last key step here is to make sure there's no twists or kinks in the chain. Although you may be able to get this to fit, with the twists that I see here, you've created weak points, and those are gonna be the first places to break. So I wanna make sure that I inspect these twists and start to take this puzzle apart and unwind, unwrap, if you will, making sure that all of the side chain and cross chain lays down flat. I can see that I've got a little bit of a problem here. So I've gotta to start to peel this back a little bit to get those kinks out of. This can, again, can be time consuming, but well worth it. So I'm just kind of working cross link by cross link to get those twists out. So I see I need a little bit more work here. Need a little bit more work here. Perfect. Once I've got this thing laid out to a point where I'm ready to install, make sure that I get centered on this tire that I'm gonna be working with and to make sure I get this tire chain centered when I grab it. It'll make it much easier when you start to do the connection process. So again, cross chain hooks want to be facing away from the tire. And when I grab this, I want the cams to be facing on the outside of the tire. 
What I'm gonna do from the middle of the chain and the middle of the tire is to drape these completely over the top and start to work the chains kind of cross-link by cross-link, making sure that everything is pulled evenly before you do any type of connection of the chain. This is a crucial part in making sure you have these on here correctly. So at this point here, I like the way that this is centered here. I'm going to start by tucking the tail end to the back side. We always want to work from the back to the front. So again, I'm just going to loosely have my speed hook attached to the tag chain here to hold this chain on as we rotate once again. So now I'll move always from the rear of the tire to the front of the tire. Just loosely fastening this here to basically just hold the chain. We're going to want to get into the vehicle and to back this vehicle up in order to get the connection points in a safe area here. Okay, so after we've moved the vehicle, now we've got this in a position that we can safely view oncoming traffic and start to tension this chain in a little bit more. So from the back side here, I'm gonna start to, by hand, start to pull in these excess links here. What I wanna visually inspect on this back side real quick is to make sure that this chain is pulled over the tire somewhat evenly, that it's not riding anywhere up too high. I also wanna make sure that when I start to pull in this tag chain, that I don't twist this chain at all. I wanna keep it somewhat uniform with the rest of the chain. Keep it in line, if you will. Once you've found the link that you're going to by hand tension, you wanna make sure you drop this excess chain out of the way. Once again, get as much chain as you possibly can. I can't quite get this link here, so I'm gonna start with this link and drop it in. I am then now going to start to move to the front and do the exact same process, pulling in as much possible slack as I can by hand before I start to tighten the cams down. So I'm going to unhook and start to do any type of pulling to make sure everything's square, which it is on here, and it's square on the tire, and to see by hand how much I can pull in. I see that I can only get to this link, and once again, like in the back, I wanna make sure that I drop any of the excess chain that I have here. Once we've got it hooked on both sides, we're now gonna start to work the cams to bring the tension in. So what we're gonna wanna do is, once again, start by camming the chains over. Each of our product will have three different connection points. You don't necessarily need to cam all three of these. Uh, depending on the life of the tire, depending on the life of the chain, this is kind of a constant change. But let's just start one at a time and kind of see where we're at from a tension standpoint. Once we've done that and we've got this onto a point where we like the tension by hand, we're not done there and that's kind of a common mistake by a lot of drivers is once they've done the tensioning here, they'll move. That's a mistake because this chain needs a chance to basically settle itself. So after camming this second cam and now doing a feel, I can see that I'm in a position that I'm ready to once again move the vehicle. What I'd like to see is at least two full rotations of this tire. That once again will allow this chain to settle itself inside the grooves. The importance of rotating the tire a few times is to now get to your final tension test. That tire rotating will actually give this chain a chance to kind of shake and settle. So now I want to make sure that I'm at a point that I need to 
bring this in a little bit more. And as you remember, now I have the option of then camming that third cam, which I'm going to need to do. So right now I've got all of my tension points that I possibly can. I see that I still have too much slack. I need to pull this chain in a little bit more. What I need to do is basically adjust this by taking in one more link. So what I'm gonna do once again is just take the tension off so that it makes it easier for me to work on this one link here at all three cam points. Now what I'm gonna try to do is work this chain a little bit to be able to pull one more link. So now that I was able to take in more splack by dropping one more link, I'm then gonna go back to trying to cam everything here to get the proper tension. Now again, all three cams aren't always required. It's going to be a constant kind of evaluation depending on how new the chain is, how new or worn the tire is. So the last part here is to start our connections with our bungees. And what we want to do is to make sure we don't have any dangling tag chain here. Um, what we don't want to do is cut this excess off. We actually want to start here by kind of wrapping into itself using these hooks here. The other part with the bungee hooks is we always want to make sure that we're working these away from the tire so it's not to dig in. So what I'm going to do here is kind of start with this link here and then work into one of these links here. So it's holding that off there. Um, no chance of it getting stuck anywhere. And then I'm going to start to work and once again a minimum of four bungees in kind of uh, straight lines across distributing the connection points evenly across um, the tire. One other key thing here is as I work my way up to the middle of the tire, I don't ever wanna use these hooks on any of this part of the cam. I wanna always stay off to the side of that if I can. Um, so I'm just gonna start by once again, working my way with the hooks facing out and start to work diagonally across the chain, staying away from the cams and keep this as centered as possible. Keep in mind right now that you know visually, this is in a good area uh, tension-wise. I'm very happy with the way this fits, but you need to make sure that you monitor this process. We, we did our last movement of the vehicle, a couple of rotations to get that chain to settle. But as you start on your journey, you, you're gonna wanna always keep an eye out um, on your chains because they're constantly going to be adjusting. Dismounting the chains, it's gonna require unhooking the back side, unhooking the front side, basically working in reverse from how we installed them. Next is to peel the tire chains off. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is get the chains set up once again into a good working position before we stow them away properly. We just want to make sure that we're doing our inspection once again. Having all of our cross chain hooks facing upwards. 
all of our cans in the open position. And we want to make sure we again go through each cross chain to make sure there's no twists or kinks. This will make it a lot easier for the next time we need to install these and also make it much easier when we stow these chains away. What we're gonna to wanna to do is work with our cross chain hook side. And we're gonna to wanna to start to use our chain hanger by draping every other cross chain over it. Um, what we also wanna do is make sure that when we go with the chains to the chain hanger, we wanna make sure we use good form and bend at our knees here. So all I'm gonna do is walk the chain over. And again, with my cross chain hooks, I'm gonna start with that cross chain and I'm gonna start to basically fold these chains using every other cross chain. Now the reason why I worked with those cross chain hooks first is that when I'm ready to take these chains off, I'm gonna be able to just basically peel those chains right back, make it much simpler next time. As I start to take the chains here out of stowage, what I'm gonna to wanna to do based off of the way I stowed them is to make sure I end up with the cross chain hooks in my hand before I start to walk and drag these out. So as I unhook these, basically gonna work down to the point of where I'm gonna grab this last part here with your cross chain hooks. So now that I can walk back with these to get back into the position of where I started before I stowed them, it makes it a lot easier to get set up for your installation here. The recommended speed for driving on tire chains is 25 miles an hour maximum, especially when driving on bare pavement. Another key way to prolong the life of the product is to constantly monitor your chains as you're driving, making sure you're aware of what's happening, um, keeping an eye in the rear view mirror, making sure your window's cracked a little bit, kind of listening if anything does sound a little bit out of whack. The other big thing with tire chain um, longevity is to make sure you're monitoring the wear on there. You actually have the ability to move the tire chains from one side of the vehicle to the other after a few um, snowstorms or a few uses of them. And you can actually prolong the life by using the opposite edge of that square link tire chain, basically doubling the life as opposed to not moving that chain at all and keeping it on the same side of the vehicle. Here's some additional tips to keep in mind. Mud flaps can be removed and secured to the catwalk with bungees before you start so that they are out of your way while you install chains. Stay alert for traffic on the road, as well as other drivers in the chaining area. Extra tag chain at the rear of the tire should be secured with a zip tie. Once you're back in the road, keep your speed below 25 miles per hour and keep an eye and ear out for any signs of chains coming loose or breaking. After removing your chains, take the time to put them away neatly so that you can chain up faster the next time you need them. If you notice signs of damage or extreme wear, use a red zip tie to flag the chains for replacement. Don't lose your cam wrench. Make sure you put it back in an easy to access location for the next time you or another driver might need it. Following these eight steps should help take some of the pain out of chaining up, reduce the risk of an issue while you're driving, and help get you home safely.